Today I'm going to share with you a demonstration in my sketchbook of some painted sweet pea vines. Sketchbooks are a huge part of my creative practice. They're where I play and experiment and try new things. They also bring me so much joy. And that's why they feature in so many of the classes that I teach. Hi, I'm Anne Butera. As a botanical watercolor artist and a gardener living in Wisconsin, winters can be hard for me. I find inspiration for my art in the flowers and plants that I grow in my garden. And in the winter when everything is dead, it's hard to find inspiration. But in the last few years, I have been looking to my garden even in the winter and finding inspiration there. Once I started paying attention, I became intrigued with all the subtle color variations, the shapes and the textures, and I just wanted to paint more and more. In this painting exercise, we will be loosening up while painting a delicate watercolor illustration, letting the colors blend on the page, and we'll be varying the line weight. I'm going to be using this sketchbook even though it's not meant for watercolors because it works just fine. And then to hold the book open, I'm using some clothespins. You can use any sort of clips, either binder clips or bulldog clips, and that keeps the page flat and smooth and easy to work on. So for this page, let's fold that over. I'm inspired by the sweet pea skeletons I saw in my garden. And I have brought in a piece here without the snow and I'll be painting that. I'm gonna be using some paint that I've already mixed that's here on my palette. I also have my paints in case I need to mix more colors. And I've got my long pointed brush, the long pointed round Princeton Velvet Touch size 10 brush. And this page is bulging a little bit, so I may push down on the side here to keep it flatter so that the paint won't spread on the page. So I'm starting out with the very tip of the brush, painting these swirly tendrils of the sweet peas. And then because of the nature of this brush, I can also paint the wider marks that are the leaves and the stems. So I'm just using the brush to create the shapes. So I started with that ochre tan golden color, and now I'm adding some brown for details. And I'm letting the paint blend on the page. So I'm gonna paint some more tendrils. This brush is really perfect for painting fine lines like this. And then coming back and adding these leaf shapes. One of the things that's fun about painting from dead plant skeletons is the fact that the leaves are crumpled. I'm not too concerned about their shapes. So I'm not trying to create a perfect leaf shape here at all, but you'll definitely get the hint of the leaves without the pressure of trying to recreate something perfectly. So this paint is still wet and I can go back in with the brown and that'll blend and bleed a little bit but also keep the distinct colors. And I can pull the paint down on the page and pull it across to create the different shapes. And I'm not fussing with it very much. Once it's down, it's down. I may add a little color, but I'm not going over and over. I'm just letting the image form on the page without too much planning either. 
so that I know the basic shape of this stem and the arrangement of leaves and tendrils. I'm not trying to create it perfectly as I've already mentioned, but just recreating the essence in terms of colors and arrangement. And I'm really loving how the brown and the tan are mixing on the page. And it's fun to let those colors do their thing without trying to control it very much. So often my art is so controlled, doing something like this really helps me to loosen up. And although these tendrils are fine details, they're fairly easy to paint. If you feel like you need some practice, you can try them out on a separate paper first, but don't worry too much about it. Mine aren't perfect, and that's really not the point. So I can smooth out edges, add a little more color, drop in some of the darker brown, blend it on the page, maybe add a little bit, uh, a few more details here, a couple more tendrils. I could add more stems if I wanted or a whole nother piece of the sweet pea, but I think I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. Just add a few more details. Let's see where else does it need? I think down here, I'm gonna smooth out the paint. It's kind of globbed up a bit. And then add some, a little squiggle of a tendril. And now I think I will call this done. Now that it's dried, you can see how the paint dried on the page. It hasn't moved around a lot and the colors are pretty much the same as they were when it was wet. I hope that you're feeling inspired now to go out into the winter and find something to paint. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.